This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like unto our God. First and foremost, before I get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha, Quadash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Chazak whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, a quick shout out as well to you, Achim and Achwath, which is also Hebrew for your brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, to y'all, I say Shalom, and that's Hebrew for peace. This is the Ach Alayah, the brother Elijah, and I'm here with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in these last days, for the edification of the elect, right? Which are the chosen Israelites. And without too much else to say, as you can see by the title of this video, there is no God like our God, right? And without too much else to say, once again, let's hop right back into the scriptures. And I'll be right to our Lord willing, this is edifying, all right? So once again, this is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our power, right? And uh, these, uh, this was, yeah, uh, Hannah, right? Which her name being pronounced in Hebrew is Hannah, uh, which means grace. Uh, she was praying before the Lord. And uh, this is a part of the prayer which she uttered, you know, to the Lord, uh, which is a very truthful statement. And I got a couple of the scriptures I'm going to grab, you know, land back in upon this statement because I was at work and I was dwelling on you know, the things that are taking place in, in these last days, especially these judgments that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is, is beginning to roll out within the earth. You know, as we've been constantly bringing out exhortations on Jacob's trouble, which is yet to come. Jacob's trouble is not already passed. It is yet to come. We're literally even at, at the doorstep of it, where uh, the Lord is going to sanction Esau Edom through the spiritual demon Satan, you know, to begin his great slaughter. Uh, uh, of his people of the heavenly father's own chosen people the israelites right which are you so-called blacks hispanics and native american indians man this has been prophesied in the book of you know Jer jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 uh daniel chapter 7 you know it's, it's prophesied all throughout the scriptures that the heavenly father is gonna bring out all hell like never before and i said daniel chapter 7 i meant um daniel chapter 12 uh in, in verse one specifically you know the lord spoke about a time where it can't be compared to any other time in regards to the hell and turmoil you you know and and the amount of slaughter and death that his people have ever gone through you know and even that the earth has ever seen you know the lord is gonna you know fully unleash you know uh evils upon his people like never before you know but yet still at the end of the day you know we understand not only is this according to biblical prophecy and you know the edomites mean you suck all white men women and children which is the sword of the heavenly father the tool in which he he has ordained and set up you know to to aid him in correcting his people you know we understand that uh that's not the end all be all you know that the lord does have a remnant according to the election of grace you know the chosen uh residue of the israelites you know who have been ordained set up from the beginning of the world to be delivered to be pardoned you know to be saved you know amongst all that chaos they're not going to be raptured so to speak like the christianity church will tell you they're not going to be raptured up before that time no but the lord is going to deal with them you know mercifully amongst that time and even at the latter end of it when those nuclear missiles are shot to babylon the great which is america you know when those nuclear missiles begin to detonate and melt this place you know the lord has promised them salvation and deliverance from that fire you know which is the second death the lake of fire in which the book of revelation goes into you know as well you know and i say all that to say uh there's only one god there's only one power there's only one lord of the heavens and the earth which can be accredited for such a time and for for such a creation and for such a world 
and for such judgments, man. And his name is Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. You know, and we acknowledge him as the Israelites, the, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We acknowledge him as our God, you know, and we, we do so in the name of his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, which, you know, he, he has risen up to, to fight for us, you know, and, and to, to represent us even to the Heavenly Father as an unblemished, you know, a bride, you know, as, as a pure, undefiled lamb, even, you know, because it was through his sacrifice in which he came over 2000 years ago to offer up on our behalf, you know, to, to present us before the Heavenly Father as that undefiled, you know, bride, you know, to him, you know, because we're going to be joined to him at his appearance in the earth, you know, uh, through that great deliverance, through that great salvation, we're going to be changed, you know, once again, all of this. Uh, is coming to us by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, the true and living God, the only true and living God, you know, and that's what um, Hannah, Hannah was saying and acknowledging in, in this prayer, you know, First Samuel 2 and 2, there is none holy as the Lord Yahweh, you know, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for there is none beside thee, there's no, there's no God, there's no living God outside of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, you know, and he's the God of the Israelites for all of y'all who who aren't familiar with the scriptures and all y'all who aren't familiar to even the 100% the truth. You know, he's the God of the Israelites, all 12 tribes, all the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You know, his 12 sons, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Nathalie, and Asher, and Issachar. You know, that's their names in the English tongue. You know, them and their sons, their descendants, he is their God. You know, as it says, continuing on, it says, neither is there any rock like our power, right? And that rock even going into our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, because we understand that the Lord Yahweh Shai exists, like, like I said earlier, as I mentioned a fourth time, he exists to be our deliverer, you know, our fortress, our, our, our uh, sanctuary in the time of need, you know, matter of fact, let's grab that real quick before I go to my main point. Let's grab that in Second Samuel. Uh, chapter 22 all right as it reads these are the words of, of king david you know malak dawada you know which for those of y'all who can receive that in the spirit he he is also uh mentioned to be uh the rock as in the 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 uh the the rock of the church the foundation of our church at him being our king you know malak dawada he you know coming back in his lot we believe you know he did come already he was peter you know in, in his ancient past life and then we believe in this time being king masha you know for those of who can receive that you know as he's resting with with his fathers you know and our fathers in the spirit world he's going to come back in his lot and he's going to stand as being the king of israel you know and the lord yahweh shai our deliverer he he stands to be the king of kings you know and the heavenly father abanao yahweh and he he surpasses all titles man you know, but digressing from that point, this is second statement 22 and one it says, and David spoke unto the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord, Yahweh is my rock, right? Which is Yahweh, the heavenly father it says, and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. So not only is the Heavenly Father, you know, chiefly, you know, accredited to be in our rock, our deliverer, because he created our Lord Yahweh Shai to be our rock and our deliverer. As he said, even, you know, the God of my rock, even being the Heavenly Father over the Lord Yahweh Shai. As he said in another in another place, I believe in the book of Psalm, when he said, uh, my Lord said unto my Lord, set thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That was in regards to the Heavenly Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai, ex ex explaining uh, the, the ranking system, explaining that the Heavenly Father truly is above the Lord Yahweh Shai. You know, but the point is, you know, right here it says, uh, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence, you know? You know, and, and that's really the point, getting another scripture proving and pointing out that this is not talking about a literal rock right when you get this word rock in the hebrew just for edification real quick this word rock in the hebrew is tazar right which which means you know a rock a cliff a rocky wall a cliff a rock a flat surface a block of stone a boulder 
a rock it says a rock of god you know and then and also a rock as in of heathen god so at one point it's mentioned a literal physical rock you know it, it says uh properly a cliff or a sharp rock as compressed generally a rock or boulder figurative figuratively a refuge also an edge you know an edge it says a mighty god one rock a sharp stone strength and strong you know so those are attributes of a rock but like i said within context if you read it it's not literally talking about a physical rock that you may pick up from the dirt or from the ground it's not talking about the same rocks that can be referred to as in idol work uh idol worship you know as like the cobblestone rock that people bow down and worship to in islam you know or like a physical wooden cross that people worship and bow down to in christianity it's not talking about that it's talking about the the power of uh salvation and strength that our heavenly father has in regards to you know his children you know he protects us he uh as, as a rock wall would do he protects us from um outside uh enemies you know think about even a kingdom a kingdom sets up a little physical wall to protect itself from um, outside enemies or outside forces that may be trying to come in to destroy what's inside that a hey, that and the spirit is our lord yahweh shai you know he's the the rock wall that the heavenly father created to defend us to fight for us you know to protect us you know as the word refuge even goes into you know to be safe within you know now let me get to my main point because the point of the exhortation being there is no god like the living god which is the god of the israelites right and this is deuteronomy chapter four because i also want to you know bring out some some of the things prophetically that was spoken to our ancestors you know um even about us in these latter days their children their descendants right it says i want to get straight to the point so let's start here verse 23 deuteronomy 4 and 23 it says take heed unto yourselves right and these are the words of moses you know which also is you know king david and his lot for those y'all who can receive that as well before he came as david you know, it says Deuteronomy 4 and 23, take heed unto yourselves, speaking to the Israelites, our, our ancient forefathers, you know, and foremothers. It says, uh, take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord Yahweh, your power, which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh, that power hath forbidden thee. All right. So uh, Moses was reminding us to to be mindful of the covenant in which we we entered into with our lord you know where we where he told us not to commit idolatry which is the worship of idols right which is basically the worship and the belief and and the putting of any other god before the heavenly father you know as, as being our one and true god you know to do that is to to make void his covenant to make void his law and to make void the union that the heavenly father has made with us you know being his chosen people and if you do so and the lord taught us about the curses that he would pour upon us for our disobedience as even moses is about to go into as it says deuteronomy 4 and 24 it says for the lord yahweh by shim yahweh shai thy power right which that word power that i keep saying is really the word allah in the hebrew which just means judge you know it says for the lord yahweh by shim yahweh shai thy power is a consuming fire even a jealous power right so the lord when we do transgress him he's not just going to act like as if it didn't happen just as a man if he's married to a, a, his wife who who he got when she was a virgin and, and she's only supposed to belong to him and not know any other man as our forefathers didn't when they entered into that covenant with the heavenly father if we were to go and play the harlot you know as our forefathers did and as you know a lot of us all of us actually had have, have followed them and partook in those ways as well before we came back into the knowledge of our heavenly power and the covenant in which he made with us the lord sees us as a as an unfaithful bride an unfaithful wife and which has committed adultery which is a sin worthy of death man you know if you if you're familiar with the laws you know uh, adultery the, the scriptures speak against it which is for uh, a man to sleep with another man's wife you know and by us going and committing idolatry we're putting another man before our heavenly father and the lord is a jealous power in which if we do that guess what he's gonna bring upon us even that consuming fire which he said it is um 
it is a just judgment. It's a, it's a righteous act, you know, you know. But once again, through our Lord Yahweh Shai, we understand that we have the ability. We've been given the the chance and the opportunity at being received as sons again, as being received as that un unblemished bride, without spot, and without blemish. As a virgin, even once again, our heavenly power is such a great power that not only will he, you know, wink at our ignorance and forgive us of our iniquities and our trespasses through our Lord Yahweh Shai, but he also will receive us back again into a more glorious covenant wherein we can't go off and play the harlot anymore. As the scriptures say we have it in Jeremiah, you know, all 12 tribes went off and forced the Lord, you know, but once again, as Moses, Moses reiterated, and the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 is the same exact gospel that's being reiterated now in these last days. Take heed unto yourselves that you forget not the covenant of the Lord Yehovah Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's not just talking about the old covenant that, that our forefathers and we being their children have forsaken. No, that's being even in regards to this new covenant that the Lord has made with us, right? Pursuing to uh, Jeremiah as well. It's even reiterated in the book of Hebrews, right? Uh... There's, uh, the book of Jeremiah 31 and 31 It reads Behold the days come saith the Lord Yahweh That I will make a new covenant With the house of Israel And with the house of Judah As it says in Hebrews 8 and 8 For finding fault with them Right Because we did transgress You know Moses was telling us Not to transgress But we knew ultimately According to the will of the Lord That we were going to transgress But we were still commanded To remember the Lord To return unto him After, after the departing and then the Lord would deal with us mercifully. You know, as it says, Hebrews 8 and 8, for finding fault with them, he said, behold, the days come. This is a future prophecy. The days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You know, and that new covenant is going to be implemented at the appearance of our Lord Jehovah Shai in the earth. You know, the sacrifice for that covenant to be uh, in effect ha ha was already made 2,000 years ago. The Lord Jehovah Shai ha has already been slain as that unblemished lamb you know as the gospels right which are known as matthew mark luke and john and the other uh so-called new testament scriptures speak on he's already come uh, he, he he's already been slain and he's already been risen according to the biblical prophecy you know and, and he's alive and well with the living power yahweh you know and he's seated up in the heavens at the right hand of the heavenly father awaiting his great commission when he's to be sent back into the earth to, to receive his bride, you know, to receive his church, which is the, the body of believers, the chosen Israelites who returned and remembered the covenant of their God. You know, as it says, Deuteronomy 4 and 25, when thou shalt beget children and children's children, and we are those children living today, it says, ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourself. Well, okay, so it's a lot. This was talking about in, in, in the time when, when we did dwell in the land. You know, in the ancient times, you know, but we are the children of, of those children today. You know, it says when thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord. Yahweh, by Shem Shah, thy power to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. That ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it, which is the land of Israel. You know, Moses said, look, if you go off, if you forsake the Lord and you start doing your own thing according to your own will and your own heart, then he, as it says, he called heaven and earth to witness against us this day, which is evident even now in this time that what the Israelites forsake the Lord because what they're not dwelling in our land. I mean, we're not dwelling in our land. You know, we're not performing those righteous acts, you know, keeping all the law to the T. We're not doing that. So as it says, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land, that happened, you know. Whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it, ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And, and once again, that literally happened. You know, you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and even all the way down to verse 68, you're skipping all the other curses that would come upon us. Verse 68 talked about how we would be uh, taken from our land and scattered, you know, and taken to a, to a, to different various lands, you know, and and in that land we would know we would know no redeemer. We will not be uh, delivered from that land, which is what that word by in the Hebrew goes into, 
no man will redeem us from it, which is why we still today, even right now, August 14th on a Monday at 9.13 a.m., we are still found in, in a stranger's land. We're not in our homeland because why? We have gone and forsaken our God, the true and living power, you know? These other idols can't be uh, given credit for, for the state of the earth now. No, because the Israelites have forsaken their rock and have decided to follow after base things and things wherein there's no prophet, Jesus the Christ <laughs> and, and, and Buddha, and Muhammad and, and and all these other false gods and uh, Egyptology and Scientology and all the other ologies and then the isms and then the alities. You got the, the, the Transformers community, the Skittles, the rainbow agenda. They, they forsaken the true and living power, the, the true and living God of the heavens and the earth. And, and they've turned around to, to reprobate things, you know, and the Lord, once again, as I said, when the Lord sees that he was going to consume them. As he is a consuming fire, he was going to consume them with, with fire, you know, pursuant to the judgment of the second death, man. You know, that, that judgment is set up because of the rebellion and wickedness that's been promoted in the earth that the Israelites have even followed after, you know. So as it says, let's continue on, Deuteronomy 4 and 27. And the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Shah, shall scatter you among the nations, which we are. We're not just here in America. We're scattered all across the world, all across the various parts of the earth, you know, and in the time of Jacob's trouble, which chiefly is going to be dealing with what the Israelites go through here in America. You know, the curses uh, explain that no matter where you go on the earth, the curses are going to follow, you know. So we understand that, you know, in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, the Lord is going to be putting a, a lot of hell on, on, on us Israelites, man, especially those of us who, who, who have this faith, man. They understand that, you know, truly the change comes with, with the elect, with the chosen. The elites know this. Not, not you low-level listeners who don't know what's going on. The elites, the, the top ruling uh, class of these nations, especially the Edomites. You know, the elite Edomites, which are the so-called white men, women, and children. They know uh, 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 of the, the scriptures, man. You know, and they know that their kingdom is coming to an end. As the scriptures say, uh, he shall come down upon thee having great wrath, for he knoweth that he has but a short time, you know, because once the elect are risen up, once the elect are remembering the covenant of their God and returning unto him, they know that the kingdom of heaven is quickly to come, you know, and that's what they're going to try to fight against, you know, so they're going to be pursuing the lives of the believers, you know, but that's also going to mean that they're going to be, you know, killing uh, you two thirds as well, which the two third prophecy in Zechariah 13 uh, talks about how two thirds of the Lord's own chosen people in the land of America, you guys are going to be slaughtered, you know, and even ultimately in that thermonuclear fire, you know, because the Lord is not dealing with y'all when it comes to faith, when it comes to repentance, right? Which is remembering who we are, who our God is and the works in which he established for us to obey and, and to serve him. And, and you guys preferred America. So the Lord said, look, since you guys are going to get down with this wicked agenda, since you guys are going to, you know, receive that haragma, right? Which is that physically implanted device pursuing the Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on down. You know, that haragma, that RFID C hip, you know, that, that allows you to buy and sell and trade and, you know, you know, show how you're one with this age and one with this order and society and world. The Lord's going to see you as such and he's going to destroy you as being a part of this world, you know? And, and then he's going to establish, guess what? that new heaven and that new earth where indwelleth righteousness that the elect the chosen israelites were, were set up to you know to rule and to reign in you know it says deuteronomy 4 and 27 and the lord shall scatter you among the nations and you shall be left few in number among the heathen whether the lord shall lead thee you know why because we would be getting killed you know the scriptures talk about how in deuteronomy chapter 28 as well that our foot would know no ease and that our life would hang in doubt before us we would have none assurance of our lives, you know, because Esau, Edom, the so-called white men, women, and children, they would have no mercy, man. You know, they wouldn't see us as being people and the, the chosen precious children of the Lord. No, they would see us as enemies and even people in which they hated, man. You know, as the scripture said, we would serve our enemies, even them that hate us, you know. So we understand that, you know, us being left few in number, it had to happen. As the scriptures even promise only a remnant being saved 
the residue of the Israelites, you know, the Lord is not coming back to save many because many don't have this faith. It says in verse 28, Deuteronomy 4 and 28, and there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. And those are those idols, Jesus the Christ, uh, Islam, you know, the, the, that wood going going into the wooden crucifix that y'all wear around your neck and put on top of your temples and then the stone going in going into even the cobblestone of mecca you know and all the other idols and false gods that y'all have erected and said that this is your god you know the lord said that you guys would do this even moses himself prophesied this against you you know against all of us and all of us at one point in time went off into idolatry but the lord being as merciful and as gracious as he is He's sending through his Holy Spirit back unto us the remembrance of him in the, in the ways that please him. It says in verse 29, but if from thence, right? So after we've committed idolatry, the scriptures, you know, even through the lips of Moses said, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, shall thy power, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So you got to actually truly want to, to, to find the Lord, man. Not just be complacent with the guys and the idols that are set before you. You got to realize that, hey, my life is fucked up. You know, what can I truly do to change it? What, where can I truly find life and even life everlasting? As the Lord Yahweh Shai said, he that uh, drinks of the water that I have, he shall never thirst. And that's of this 100% truth. That's the, the, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord Yahweh Shai promised that, that with him is everlasting life. You know, it says, um, and what, as the scripture said, if you seek him with, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, you're going to find him. You know, that's as even the scripture say, as it was your heart is being led astray uh, because it was you who went off. Now being returned, seek him 10 times more. That's what your whole heart, with your whole soul, with your whole being. Right now, word heart in the Hebrew is love, which means your mind. You got to have nothing um, on your mind except for the seeking and the pleasing of our Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, as the scriptures even say in Matthew, I believe 6 and 43, but seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, and all these things shall be added unto you. So your mind got to be stayed on this ministry, on this gospel, on this 100% truth, and even the coming of the kingdom of heaven, or else the Lord is not going to deal with you when it comes to, you know, preserving you from all the hell that he's about to bring upon us. Once again, referring to Jacob's trouble. You're going to have martial law out here, famine on the rise, pestilence, diseases being multiplied in the earth. You know, man, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, betraying his neighbor, you know, not being able to trust anybody, you know, literally animals and strange apparitions coming up and being risen up, you know, to, to, to take your soul, to destroy you, to kill you. You know, the Lord has all manners of evils in which he purposed to be brought forth out on the earth in these last days just for the revealing of who his true servants are you know as it says Deuteronomy 4 and 30 when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee even in the latter days which, right which we are in even now the last days of the reign and rulership of Esau Edom the so-called white men women and children the very last days in which America will be in the earth because after these days are over America will be a thing of the past a thing of no more it'll be a wasteland a desert even you know but the scripture says, when thou art in tri tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall thy power and shall be obedient unto his voice for the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall thy power is a merciful power. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. So, so we got to do our part. We got to come back to the Lord and remember him, acknowledge him. You know, repent and knowledge how we did transgress according to as we were told not to. And, and then guess what? The Lord is going to deal with us mercifully. What other God is like our God who not only judges as strict, you know, and meaning what he says and says what he means, but also can can turn around and shoot mercy, you know, understanding that that we are, you know, weaker, weak vessels in these bodies, you know, that the. That the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our God knows this, man. So, so when we turn unto him with our whole heart and with our whole mind, guess what? He's merciful towards us, you know, and us alone. As we understand, pursuant to the scriptures as well, his mercy, his care 
is for his elect, you know, which is only the Israelites, you know. It says, and, and uh, we're going to wrap it up here pretty soon. This, uh, we're getting straight to the, even the main, main point. It says, Deuteronomy 4 and 31, once again, for the Lord, thy power is a merciful power. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. So he's going to be remem uh, remembering the, 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 the new covenant that he's been made unto us through our Lord Yahweh Shai and his sacrifice. He's going to tell his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, our rock, go and get them. You know, as the Lord says in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 5. Right when uh, he's gonna send his angels with a great shout to go and deliver, go and to deliver his elect from the four winds of the earth. You know he's gonna the heavenly father is gonna tell his son, son, it's time, and the Lord Yahweh is gonna gather up the angels, the host. He's gonna command them to go and gather up his chosen. You know, so to know the Lord is not gonna forsake us. No, he's not gonna destroy us utterly, but he's gonna deal with us mercifully, even if we be already dead. You know, because some of the, the saints will be martyrs for this truth. Even if we'd be already dead, like uh, for a great example, as a uh, King Masha, you know, Malak Dawada, and, and the Spirit once again for those of who can receive it, he has to come back in his lot as well. Which means what? At the appearance of the Lord Yahweh Shai in the earth, he's gonna be risen from the dead, and he's gonna, you know, receive the new covenant benefits as well, having those new bodies wherein dwelleth everlasting life, everlasting righteousness. You know, it says in verse thirty-two, for ask now. Of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai created man upon the earth, and ash from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. You know, so he, Moses is basically saying, go to the other nations, go ask the other people if they can say that they have a God who's going to do this for them like you do. The answer is no. You know, and it says in verse 33, did ever people hear the voice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? You know, as the, the that pillar of fire appeared up over Mount Horeb and they heard the voice of the Lord speaking through that chariot. You know, can any other nation say they, that the Heavenly Father did that through his son for them? No, only the Israelites, you know, there's no other God like our God, you know says in verse 34 or or hath Yahweh Bashim Yahweh a say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations by signs and by wonders and by war and by a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm and by great terrors according to all that the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh your power did for you in Egypt before your eyes the answer is no the Lord didn't go and choose another nation outside of the Israelites hell no and the Lord didn't just not only choose another nation outside of the Israelites, but he didn't deliver them from Egypt with great temptations and signs and wonders. He didn't part the seas. He didn't rain down fire from heaven. You know, he, he didn't um, uh, turn water into blood. He didn't send locusts. He didn't kill off all the cattle, kill off all the first. He didn't do none of that for no other nation outside of the Israelites. You know, it says in verse 35, unto thee it was shewed. That thou mightest know that the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, he is power. There is none else beside him. And that is why the Lord has done such great things for us as he's done. To show us that not only he is, as those who have faith and those who please and want to come and serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth, must believe that he is, you know, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You got to believe that the Heavenly Father is first. And then you also got to believe on his mighty works, which is what's going to fuel your faith, you know, which is going to give you, you know, the 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 wisdoms that you need, as the scriptures say, will be the wisdom and uh, that wisdom and knowledge would be the stability of our times and the days of trouble and the days of tribulation. When all hell is broken loose, you're going to have to remember the works of our God, the works of the Lord. And that's what's going to give your mind peace, knowing that the Heavenly Father can, can lower the mountains and can raise raise the valleys to, to make a way for you back to him you know that's the power in which we serve the, the heavenly father that can can rain down fire from the heavens and destroy babylon the great for us the heavenly father that can strengthen our spirit to give us the the spirit of courage and endurance to resist the hour temptation which is the mark of the beast being enforced once again that rfidc hit 
you know, the power that can rain down manna and food from the heavens to feed us, you know, when famine is, is, is striking, you know, you got to remember these things that same God that can, that can tell you to strike a rock and pour out rivers of water for you when you're thirsty. These are the things that's going to comfort us in the, in the times of evil and give us hope, you know, and allow us to trust in, the, in, in our God, you know, for there is none like our God, neither is there any other God beside him, you know. It says Deuteronomy 4 and 36. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, right? Out of that chariot. That he might instruct thee. And upon earth he shewed thee his great fire. And thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. You know? It says, And because he loved thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, therefore he chose their seed after them. Right, what's that word seed meaning the, the, the descendants, you know, as it says in the New Living Translation, Deuteronomy 4 and 37, because he loved your ancestors, he chose to bless their descendants. He personally brought you out of Egypt with a great display of power, you know, once again, with, with uh, Moses leading us, you know, even following that chariot, being covered by that chariot, which our Lord Yahweh Shah was in, you know, as it says in Exodus, it was a, a pillar of fire by, by night. And a pillar of a cloud by day. That was our Lord Yahweh Shai leading and guiding us in that chariot for those of y'all who can't receive it. He was the one that was striking the wheels off the Egyptians' chariots as they tried to chase us, you know. It was him, you know. Abba Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Our father, you know. Abba Nawa Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because he's only our God. It says Deuteronomy 4 and 38 in the KJV. It says to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art right and that was what what the whole purpose of of when you read even the story of david and goliath was david was a was a young lad according to the scriptures and goliath was this big ass ham my ham medic philistine a big ass african so to speak you know and guess what david through the strength and power of his god you know was able to conquer that giant you know and that's exactly in like manner Throughout the strength and power of our God, we few little remaining feeble Israelites are going to be made strong again, and we're going to conquer these great greater nations who are mightier and stronger than us through our God, and even through the name of our God, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. For even for you non-believers out there, it says to drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance, as it is this day which is the land of israel the land of jerusalem you know and we're gonna we're gonna end it off uh with verses 39 yeah matter of fact yeah let's just end it off at verse 39 it says Deuteronomy 4 and 39 know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the lord yahweh by shem yahweh shai he is power in heaven above and upon the earth beneath there is none else, right? And that is exactly the power in which the Israelites have to return unto and hearken to, be obedient unto his voice, especially in these latter days, because this is when he's going to show himself strong like never before. He's going to reveal himself even to the heathen. The scriptures say even the heathen are going to know that the children of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. You know, loosely paraphrasing, because when we return, it's going to be known about how we're never going to commit iniquity ever again. And the kingdom of heaven will be able to be established in the earth forever. You know, and the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh alone is going to be exalted in that day, man. You know, so with that, I'm going to end it. You know, Abaratazah, Lord willing, this is edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Until next time, Achim and Akwath, I'm going to say Shalom and give all praise, honor and glory. To Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachah Kodash, Wa Abad Baba, Delta America.